Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Indiana Jones and I love to craft, but especially to bring you along on my crafting adventures. Where are we going today? To the world of Fantasy Core. I'm going to inspire my DIYs that are usually shabby chic with a little bit of fairy magic. So I'll be fairy chic today. What is Fantasy Core? It's an aesthetic that's based on fictional universes from mermaids to fairies to gnomes to elves, even leprechauns. But let's get started. For my first project, I'm going to take shabby chic decor and just give it a little bit of fairy fantasy inspiration. So this is what I call or what's usually called a rag garland. They're wonderful in any shabby chic aesthetic decor and they're very easy to make. I use chopsticks that you see are still stuck together at the top and it's easy to thread through lace, ribbon, pearls, and even some burlap that I've ripped and, and you know, shredded up and ripped up so it, it could be nice and shabby and shaggy. It's a wonderful way to create a shabby chic tassel. So all I'm doing is gathering all the tassel and cutting the ends just to make it even, not to make it perfect, but more or less evening it out. Even, I hate using that word, even, evening it out. I don't know if that's the correct word making it even okay and then once i tie it at the top here i am pulling it off of the chopsticks to make it easier for me to tie it in the middle there you see the rag garland or the, i'm sorry the rag tassel is tied in the middle and all i'm going to do is this top of the tassel we're going to change it up and this is where it becomes fairy core because usually with the tassel not only do you tie it at the middle but you also tie it so it has like a little bit of a bump at the top of it. Well, that bump is going to become part of the corset, you could say, of our fairy dress. Yes, this little shaggy, raggedy tassel is actually going to become a fairy dress. And just with a few additions, it, it comes to life. It's absolutely beautiful. So here I'm adding a little lace heart so that it looks more like a corset. And then I'm going to add some more trim around the waist so it adds to the look of the skirt. It also helps to give it a little bit of volume. Now I didn't show it here, but I do add some tool to this to the bottom of all of these rags and ribbons just to give it again some body and make it look more like a skirt instead of just making it look like a tassel but i love this idea now there you can see the corset now we're going to give it some sleeves as you can see with this very thin tiny tiny like lace ribbon that i have it's always so good to keep all of your lace and your ribbon and your little findings every little piece counts and especially if you do shabby chic it's like don't throw away any ribbons or any lace because it all comes in handy so here i am adding the sleeves quote unquote sleeves and then of course to make it look even more like a dress i am going to or make it more like a fairy actually i'm going to add these beautiful leaves that i had in my stash and make these look like fairy wings it's very easy to do i used four of these leaves I think these were from Christmas and I use the top and then there'll be smaller ones at the bottom to really find it, finish off that look so that it really does look like fairy wings. Now I'm creating a golden hanger. I just think this really finishes it off and really makes it look like a tiny little fairy dress. I love making little fairy dresses. They're so adorable. And here I'm just using, and this is wire that I got from the Dollar Tree and it was golden just so perfect for this project so I hope you can find some of this wire as well and all I'm going to do is place the dress as you would any dress onto the wire and there's the look it's complete now what a wonderful idea not only for your shabby chic decor but any little girl's room or what about a bridal shower wouldn't this just be precious for a bridal shower or even a baby shower how beautiful can you imagine making a mobile made of shabby chic rags and that look like fairies floating around how beautiful even for older girls you can have a little mobile or hang this off of a chandelier it's just you can use this in so many different ways and it's so beautiful and romantic i hope you try this yourself i hope you enjoy these projects and if you love the idea of fantasy core 
Please visit the playlist link down below to see some other wonderful creations by some fun and fabulous friends of mine here on YouTube. So if it's fairies or mermaids or gnomes, elves, anything, remember, just check out the Fantasy Core Spring Playlist. Now to add to this last project, I thought it would be nice to actually show you how to create this shabby chic tassel or fairy dress into an actual centerpiece. And all I did was take two of those styrofoam rounds that you get at the Dollar Tree and this wonderfully raggedy curved branch that I found outside. I just thought it was perfect. Yes, it looks spooky now, but it's not going to look spooky forever. It's just the bare bones of this centerpiece. And I'm using a one of those plastic um, containers that you have at the Dollar Tree for flowers and for flower pots. So here I'm adding the moss at the bottom of this, the styrofoam uh, holder at the bottom of this centerpiece. And all I'm doing again is just covering it all the way around with my hot glue. Please be careful with your fingers. You will get burned if you don't do this carefully. Uh, I'm used to it. So yeah, I have like moss all over my nails at the end of this. But this creates such a beautiful way, not only as a centerpiece, but again, you can have this as a decor item in a little girl's room. You can add lights to it and it could be a beautiful fairy light, night light. Uh, right there by her nightstand. I just so many different ways that you can use this and I thought springtime is a perfect time for this kind of decor because it's just lovely to add to your Easter decor or your spring decor in any room of the house actually. Here you can see that I'm adding leaves to our little miniature tree and I'm just using again florals from Dollar Tree and finally added some miniature roses also from the Dollar Tree and there we can see our beautiful fairy dress hanging off of this lovely branch for this centerpiece. I hope you try this out and I just think it makes a lovely, lovely centerpiece for any occasion. Now, what would a fairy core crafting video be without a fairy door? I think this is another great idea to include in your fairy core and shabby chic decor. Here is this home uh, decor that I found at the Dollar Tree. And these are different doors that I was checking out to make my fairy door. Finally, I ended up with this Christmas door that I had left over, obviously from Christmas. I'm sanding off the glitter that's on the front door. I know, right? Weird. It's for fairies. Why aren't you going to leave the glitter on? Well, I'm going to change the color of this so I didn't want to have any kind of bumpiness. Next, I'm just going to cover up that backdrop or this home decor shelf from the Dollar Tree, obviously with some uh, chalk paint that I made myself a little bit of baking soda. And I'm using this creamy color. It's not necessarily white, it's a creamy color. Next, I'm using my heat gun to actually bubble up the paint. Why? Because I thought it would look more rugged, more stone-like, instead of just flat paint. This is a wonderful step because not only am I drying the paint, but I'm giving it some texture, which is perfect for this project. Next, I just started uh, dabbing on some paint to give it more of a stone look, as well as painting the door a dark uh, taupe color, just to cover up that red because I don't want any of the red to be like peeping through. To continue adding to the whimsy of this fairy door, I'm going to create a little tree that is going to be framing the door itself. And also it's going to take away a, a little bit of that, you know, just, you know, straight edges on the sides of this little fairy door. Um, here I am adding the actual clay, it's air dry clay, and just measuring the door to make sure that the roots that I've created aren't going to interfere with the door itself. Not that the door is going to open. I could have added some hinges and have the door open, but I just thought this was an easier way to do it. So here I am texturizing the clay. So it actually looks like the branch of a tree or the bark of a tree. Now I say a tree trunk, but actually this is very tiny. It's a very tiny tree because this is a fairy door after all. And I guess this is a fairy tree. So as I am waiting for the clay to dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint the door this lovely pale ballerina pink. I don't know what color you want to call it. I didn't look, but it's just a beautiful folk art uh, paint. And I just love this very pale, um, 
beigeish pink. It's so lovely. And while the door dries, now I am painting the branches of this little miniature tree that is going to be framing our lovely little fairy door. Now this fairy door is a special door because it's like for a princess fairy, I suppose. So the most important thing is, again, use different colors so it, it creates a very natural looking bark or branch. Here I am painting the bottom of that shelf simply because I don't want the white to peek out through the moss. And here we are adding moss. Oh my goodness, there's so much moss in this video. I hope you guys are ready with your little vacuums because there is moss all over my craft floor now. You know how it is. I love it and I hate it. I just, I do love how it looks at the end of the project, but oh my goodness, the mess. Now we're going to use some baking soda and my tiny, teeny little molds that I have. I'm again going to use some air dry clay because I wanted to create some decor for my door. Some decor for my door. Decor for my door. Because my door was like plain. And I said, no, this is this is for a princess fairy. I want a princess fairy door. So here I am creating these love and look how cute they look. Come on. You gotta admit they came out cute. And again I'm going to use wood glue on these dried, already dried um, embellishments for our fairy door. I think they came out so super cute and again so easy to make and inexpensive as well. Now I didn't show it here but I did try to age and antique and make the door seem more weathered and and I don't know I just used a little bit of a brown color and did some dry brushing as you can see there and I, I did add some gold embellishments just a little bit just a few touches to the door accessories that you see on top of the embellishments that I created from air dry clay. Now I am creating the tree by adding branches and and leaves and these branches of uh, lavender. I just thought it would be so cool if there was like a little lavender bush that is growing nearby and the flowers just ended up on this tree. And there you have your little fairy door. Since I already had the clay out and the little mini molds out, I decided to make a little fairy house using this little birdhouse that I had bought from, I think, Target after Christmas. And it was perfect because it didn't have any holes for actual um, birds, I suppose. And uh, it was 90% off, so I think I got it for 30 cents. It was wonderful. So here I am creating windows and doors. I, I don't know if you can tell, but I already painted it the same pale pink as the door that you saw before. Now, again, using the wood glue, once the embellishments that I created in the air dry clay are dry, it's so easy to add them with this wood glue that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree. So here I am adding some trim all around this tiny little fairy house that I'm creating. I really love this. Sometimes I, you know, I, I wish I had a little girl named Bri. I mean, my niece, she's not into this fairy stuff. I hate to say it. But uh, I might have to gift this to somebody, like the whole fairy set, to somebody that I know close by. We'll see what happens. So here I am creating the window panes. I added some trim around the door. Now I am at, I'm painting in some bushes just by dotting them. It's, it's such a tiny little house, but I thought it would be cute to have some little bushes uh, right around the doorway and creeping up the sides as well. So I decided to also put this on one of these uh, birch bark, um, I don't know, pieces of wood. I don't know how else to call it. And I also got this 90% off, but this was from Hobby Lobby. And I said, what a perfect way to perch up my little fairy house. And now, of course, adding some more moss because what's a fairy project without moss? So here I am adding some moss. And again, what a perfect little way to decorate a little girl's room if it's fairy inspired. Next, our fairy princess, of course, has to have a fairy crown. You can also use this as a mini wreath if you don't want to use it as a headband or a crown. So all I did is use this greenery that I had gotten at 50% off at Hobby Lobby. So I think the whole roll was $3.99, so it came out to $2, which is a steal and perfect for spring. And here I am adding these smaller flowers that I had in my stash once again. And I just love this pale pink. It's almost between pink and peach. It's just such a beautiful color. It's uh, like a, 
I, I don't know, like an old English rose. I just love this color. And I thought this was such a perfect addition to our fairy decor. And again, you can use this as a headband, which I'm sure little girls would love. Or you can use this as a mini fairy wreath in your spring decor. I hope you remember to check out the rest of this Fantasy Core Spring Playlist, and I hope that you add a little bit of magic and whimsy to your spring decor this year. I want to thank all of my friends who joined me in this wonderful adventure into something a little more fantastic for this spring. Now, to the rest of my projects. Using these flexible cutting mats from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to create some fairy wings that you saw in the opening segment. Now, I wasn't going to include this as part of the video because I really didn't think they turned out that well, but they kind of look cute when I did the video. So I said, well, let me add them here. So how many mats are you going to need? You're going to need two for each of the um, top wings and one um, set of two for the bottom wing. So in total, you're going to need four for the top, one for each side, and one set of two, so two for the bottom. So a total of six, and that's why I had um, three bags of these cutting mats. So here I am painting this with folk art color shift paint and dragonfly paint. I don't know if you can see, the dragonfly paint includes color shifting glitter, which is amazing and perfect for fairy wings. Now it looks kind of messy here, but um, it was still a little wet, but there you can see how it shines and glistens in the light and in the sunlight, it's amazing. And here I'm going to use those same cutting mats to connect the two wings together. Now these are very lightweight wings and I think this would be perfect for a little girl. And you're probably wondering, how did I connect this to my dress? Well, I simply used some clips that you can get from the Dollar Tree as well. And they hang on pretty well, but you can come up with other ideas to clip this on to your own outfits. This is a blast from the past. This is a flower fairy dress that I created last year and I really love the way this turned out and I still have it as part of my spring decor. Imagine all the different flowers that you can add and create little flower dresses. Look at this how cute. Now you can watch the whole video here so you can get other spring ideas but I just thought I had to include include this flower fairy dress for your decor and is part of this fairy core fantasy core playlist. I loved creating this and I hope you try to create this as well. Now let's see the final reveal from Collie Square in Florida. Thank you so much for joining me in this fantasy core adventure and please check out the rest of the playlist. As I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you and remember to live the adventure. See you soon.